So you want to start breeding, but you're on a budget, and you're looking for a quick return on investment. Stand by. What's going on YouTube? It's your favorite Uber Eats driver, Baker from Blue Eye Morris. New to the channel, give me a thumbs up, the notification bell, please subscribe. We're growing, we're like 1340. Big thank you to Billy and also over at Mutation Creation for the shout out this week. I was blown away that they even picked my channel. I greatly appreciate it, guys. And no, I don't have one of your stickers, but I will get one shortly. I'm trying to get some t-shirts made up before I send you out a package. Um, Big Mama's Clutch, we're doing all right, guys. Stand by for Friday. Today's Sunday. I'm posting this on Monday. Stand by for Friday. I'm going to do a complete update. What I think went wrong, what everybody kind of told me went wrong, what I saw went wrong, what I did to fix it, what I'm going to do to fix it. So stand by for that video on Friday. I'm also on that video, we're going to announce that giveaway. We're going to give you a chance to comment and have all the rules and regulations, etc. to give away that pastel mail sitting over here. Um, so Instagram, blue underscore, blue underscore line, underscore morphs, Facebook, Facebook, uh, blue line morphs. Anyway, so I had this question asked a few times on my Facebook lives, Instagram lives, no, my YouTube lives. Uh, what's a good return on investment for $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, 4000 5000 6000 whatever the case may be. So today I'm going to cover two breakdowns of $1,000, your return on investment, how you start building your projects from there, and also cover one slightly more expensive to the $3,000 range. Um, this, all these, this is just some, I did a quick search on Morph Market, put together some breeding strategies, you know, one male, three females, one male, two females, something like that. This is assuming you have, you know, equipment and all that and you have a thousand dollars to spend on a couple snakes and you want to kind of breed in the first season all these projects i'm going to like talk about you can kind of apply this to different genes whatever genes you want um like like the three thousand dollar one i'm going to talk about pies you can apply it to clowns or you know, whatever you want to apply it to um this is also assuming you're buying three semi-ready to breed females which i know i preach against that but if you're trying to do it i'm going to take the chance it is what it is these, these females are not that expensive you're not dropping three four thousand dollars on one breed ready female that isn't proven or whatever the case may be and the males that i'm talking about are hatchlings okay um just so you can buy them at 90 grams 100 grams and you can have them ready to breed in you know 10 months i have that coral Glow black crystal trick mojave male that i purchased literally a year ago at again i don't, I don't remember 70 80 grams maybe 50 grams and he's just over 800 now, no power feeding, went on a hunger strike for two months, he's good to go. In a year, he's probably good to go four or five months ago. Um, so let's get right into this. I have it all written down because I can't remember shit. Um, all right, again, this is assuming you have equipment. This is not, you don't have to stick to these genes, but this is the rough idea of what you can do. So in a morph market, the first thing I found was a black pastel female. This is a $1,000 range. Black pastel female at 18 of 1,600 grams for 450 bucks. All right, black pastel kind of enhances everything, especially banana. We'll get into that in a second. So you got a black pastel female for 150 bucks, right? Then I found another yellow belly female for 350 bucks at 1,500 grams. So now you're into this project for $800. You got two breed-ready females that really enhance all your projects, right? Then we got to find a good male. So with black pastel, you know I love banana or core glow with the black pastel. So you can find a banana male for, I don't know, 200 bucks, 250 bucks. So now you're into this project for $900 to $1,000. You have a chance of hitting banana pastels or, you know, some yellow belly bananas and stuff like that. So ultimately, you can produce 10 to 12 eggs, sell them for, let's say, let's say you hold back two or three, sell nine for roughly 300 bucks, give or take on average. You got 2,700 bucks for the two clutches, you know, minus your equipment, minus you know, your rats. Either way, you're paying for that investment. You have snakes for the future. Quick $1,000, you can produce some nice stuff. Now, this $1,000 project I really like. Um, everyone loves bells, right? Everyone loves the Blue Eyed Lucy's, the White Snake with Blue Eyes. Who doesn't fall in love with them? So I put this project together for like $1,000, bucks, which is like a, just a bell breeding shit show, right? So I found a Mojave female for 300 bucks at 1,500 grams, okay? I found a lesser female for 140 bucks at 1,600 grams. And I found a Russo female at 1,800 grams for like 250 bucks. So now we're into this for what? Three, four, about $650, give or take for those three females, right? They're all in the blue eye leucistic complex. So you have a Mojave female good to go, a lesser female good to go, and a Russo female good to go. You have three different genes that you put in your projects now, they also produce bells. And I would do is I would find a lesser Mojave, okay? Or I would find a male bell, okay? Then three, 400 bucks on him. You're into the project for $1,000. Now you have, you know, you have your visual bell, not that it's recessive or whatever, but you have a visual bell that carries two, two genes that are in the blue eye leucistic complex. Then you have three breed ready females that also have the gene. So you start breeding that bell to those three females, and let's say you get 16 eggs, 18 eggs, average six a piece, 
Let's say you hold back three or four. You got 14 eggs to sell. Let's say you hit seven. For argument's sake, let's say you hit seven bells. That's 2,800 bucks just on those alone. The other seven, let's say you sell for 100 bucks, you got $3,500 for a $1,000 investment. If you, if you follow me, if you hit the odds, you can hit no bells, right? My buddy Saul from Soul Balls, he had, uh, I think it was a lesser Mojave clutch. Out of six eggs, he had five bells. If the odds are with you, the odds are with you. But regardless, I really like this $1,000 project. Again, Mojave female for 300 bucks, breed ready. Lesser female for 140 bucks, breed ready. Russo female for 200 bucks, breed ready. And then get yourself a bell, a uh, male. Raise them up, breed with those three females. They'll start cranking out some white snakes and blue eyes. They sell instantly. They're gorgeous. Everybody likes them. Um, everyone likes them for pets. Everyone likes them for breeding projects. They're a showstopper. When I post my bell on Instagram, it blows up, right? People, when I show my collection with my buddies or whatever, the only snake they gravitate towards is my Luna, my bell. Okay, so let's get into the more expensive project. And now I did this pro I broke this project down for pies because I like pie. Recessive genes seem to hold their value, and they also sell. Um, so you can probably apply this to clown, you can probably apply, apply this to any other recessive gene or just more expensive snakes in general if you're trying to make some nice, uh, uh, this is more like a het project, okay? That, that's how I designed this. Um, again, quick search on Morph Market, this is what I came up with. So in a pie project with three grand to spend, I found a pastel leopard calico female het pie for 1400 bucks, and she is 1500 grams. She's your most expensive female. And the reason why I chose her, you got three genes in there on top of your pies. So I was talking to my buddy, Mike Porter. I'll try to put together my puzzle projects. Now I had spoken about this before guys, where I said, you know what, I'm gonna buy a couple of visual uh, puzzles. But unfortunately the only thing that's visual was like a pastel puzzle or a calico puzzle. These one codom visual puzzles, uh, females. Um, he said, why don't you buy hats? I know you're against hats and you want like, you know, you, you want 100% success rate with your clutches when it comes to visuals. But if you buy hats, you can stack genes on top of them sweat. You can stack genes on top of it. That's why I chose this one female. So you got three genes on top of the head pie. You got pastel, leopard, calico. Yes, she's fourteen hundred bucks, but she takes up half your uh, half your budget. But she's well worth it with those three genes. Then I found two more just normal head pie females. They're both about eighteen hundred grams to twenty one hundred. One was eighteen fifty. One was like twenty one seventy uh, grams, and they were both about four hundred to four hundred fifty bucks. So now we're in this project for roughly twenty two hundred to twenty three hundred dollars. Okay. You got three females, but you have three um, codons on top of the pie so far. Now, what I also found is from Justin, he has a, what the hell is it? an Enchi Yellow Belly Pied Visual Male for 900. This will put you slightly over $3,000, but because you have that visual, you increase your chances of producing pies from the other ones. So if you break down the breeding strategy for that, first and foremost, in your pie project for roughly $3,000, now you got pastel, leopard, calico, yellow belly, and enchi. So you got five codons on top of your pie projects. Instead of producing normal pies, or, listen, you can hit no pies in these projects, right? Especially those normal pie girls, you can produce just all normal pies or no pies, I get that. But you're increasing your odds of producing some more expensive snakes, some snakes that are more visually appealing and can sell for more money, and you know, you're know you just making your projects better, right? You don't want to sit there and produce the same stuff every year. That's the whole point of this, right? You make a little money on the side, but you like to produce things and work on projects later on. So you're producing five codons into your pie project. So let's say with that pastel leopard calico het pied female, you made it with that pastel, um, that pastel leopard, uh, sorry, that past the yellow belly enchi pied male. Let's say you hit, let's say the odds are in your favor, you hit that pastel leopard and she yellow belly calico snake, right? I don't know what that pod would look like, but it'll probably be phenomenal. And right there alone, if you hit that, you're paying for your entire um, investment. Okay, that snake will probably be worth two to three thousand dollars. That three grand spent on all four of those snakes, boom, paid for. See you around. Thanks for showing up. Let's say you hit it twice, you doubled your money. Let's say you take that yellow belly uh, and she pied male, you hit it with those two normal pieds. Let's say you hit a couple uh, and she uh, yellow belly uh, pieds, whatever the case may be, boom, paid for. So realistically, guys, when you start putting these projects together, um, the more expensive or the more money you spend on like the whole budget of the project is the quicker you have that return on investment. So if you only have $1,000 to spend, listen, slow growth, it is what it is, not a big deal. As long as you're cranking them out, as long as you're moving, you're making stuff you like, and you're making it for the benefit of the animal and the hobby, not a big deal. But if you start spending a little more money in the $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 range, you can start stacking some codons on top of some recessives if you pay for the heads and you'll be good to go. Like for example, my puzzle project, right? I'm in my puzzle project right now for 3,300 for the two head females, but I have Orange Dream, Pastel, Lesser, Spider, and Yellow Belly all on top of my head puzzle girls. 
So I'm probably gonna get another head puzzle girl with another couple codons on top of it, then get a visual male, right? So we're taking that pie project I just talked about and just explained to you guys, and I'm kind of uh, multiplying it by you know five or six thousand dollar budget or project but you're gonna have five or six codons on top of the puzzle, just like you'll have five or six codons on top of the pie project I just explained. Um, I really like that pie project. So those are quick some examples, guys, of how you can put together some projects on a budget. Um, those are all to kind of be breed ready in your first season, right? You should buy in the breed ready females, and then you can grow that male up really quickly and breed them back to them, okay? Especially with that $3,000 project, you have five codons mixed in there. If you reproduce just a female visual, like you had that leopard, the hell was she? Uh, leopard, pastel, calico, head pie, female. Just if you hit that alone, you're gonna probably pay for her or if not the whole entire project in itself. And then you're really kickstarting your project, really kickstarting your collection. You start some holdbacks, you start to make a little money, pay for your investment. So at least bare minimum, you know, you're breaking even with your hobby, you're loving what you're doing, but it doesn't cost you anything out of your pocket, right? If you make a little surplus, cool, awesome, way to go. Um, yeah, those are some ways to build some uh, easy projects, guys. Uh, if you like a video like this, let me know. I'll break down exactly how I'm building like my clown projects, my clown pie projects, what my plan is, what my investment is so far. Let me know if you want to see that video. Comment down below. Comment down below if you have any other suggestions on how to build some good return on investment. Now, I know it's all like faux pas or it's cliche, whatever the case may be, where it's like, don't talk about money. Don't talk about money comes to ball pythons. How dare you try to make money? If that's the case, hey, no problem. Breed your ball pythons. Give them away. Don't sell them, right? With that being said, we all kind of want to pay for our projects. We all kind of want to pay for the hobby, at least break even, right? Make a little money on the side, a little drinking money, whatever the case may be. Um, don't be ashamed of that. But at least with this, with the budget, you kick it off, you start making money, you start making snakes, so eventually you can just put it back in your projects, right? That's essentially what happens to us all. We make money, you put it back into the snakes. Um, yeah, that's it. Quick video, guys. I'm going to head out with Shelby right now. Go make some more money on Uber Eats to pay for more snakes. Uh... Last time we had a good night on a Saturday, made like 240 bucks in seven hours. I uh, can't beat that, right? I'm just driving around listening to music, hanging out with my dog. Not bad at all, in the AC, which I need right now. If you have any questions about Uber Eats, let me know. It's actually fun. So, as always, guys, be safe. Watch your six.